Let us delve a little deeper into ggplot. This time we'll take a look at the aesthetics and how we map aspects of the data frame to aspects of the plot. So we saw this plot earlier. This is a plot of displacement of the engine versus the highway mileage of the cars. And we saw that there is a general decreasing trend that with increasing displacement, the highway mileage keeps on decreasing. So that's what we see. What this means is that cars that have low displacement have relatively high mile, uh, highway mileage and cars that have high displacements have relatively low highway mileage. Okay, but now we are faced with a slight conundrum, which is these cars seem to have high displacement, which is the engines are powerful big engines. At the same time, they don't seem to have as low highway mileage as we would expect, right? You would expect that these values would be somewhere here, but they seem to be higher. So they are bucking the trend. So we might wonder what's going on. Okay, one possibility might be, well, you know, are these sort of hybrid cars or something or what's going on? Okay, so if they're hybrid cars, obviously they'd be consuming part of their energy in terms of electricity and therefore their uh, miles per gallon would obviously be somewhat better. But we don't know what it is. So one way to find out would be to add a dimension to the plot that indicates for each car what type of car it is. Okay, so right now this is a two-dimensional surface. We are able to plot displacement versus highway mileage. We are able to plot two dimensions. What we are now talking about is can we add one more dimension to the plot? Okay, so that's what we are going to do. And up to this point is still the old plot. GG plot data equals MPG. Geom point mapping equals X is displacement, Y is highway. But now we add one more aspect to the aesthetic. We are saying color equals class. Okay, color, of course, since we are talking about geom point, you're talking about the color of each of the points. So now we are saying, I want the color of the point to depend upon the class of the corresponding point. The class is one of the columns in the data frame, right? For every class car, there is a class that indicates it may be a two-seater, uh, mid-size minivan, uh, SUV, etc. That's the class of a vehicle. We are saying plot every point with X on uh, displacement on the x-axis, highway mileage on the y-axis, but also give a color to the each point depending upon the class of the vehicle. Okay, so when you do that, your plot changes like this, right? So the points are still the same as before, but now the color of each of the points depends upon what class of car it is. And the system also added a legend here to indicate to us what color corresponds to what kind of class. Okay, so all this happened automatically, all because we said color equals class. Okay. So that's the whole idea. So now we can see that all these cars are two-seater cars based on the color. We see that these are all two-seater cars. And then we realize, oh, okay, these are two-seater cars because they are basically racing cars, right? And racing cars have powerful engines, but are otherwise small. They are two-seaters, so they're small because of that. And they are also engineered to be quite lightweight compared to the power of their engine. So naturally, their highway mileage is not as bad as it might otherwise be. Okay, so that sort of explained to us what's going on. Okay, so they're all sports cars and this clearly explains what's going on. Okay, so we just used that aspect or that part of the story to indicate how we can add more information to a two-dimensional plot. In other words, on a two-dimensional paper surface, we can actually plot more dimensions and indicate information about more dimensions. So that's what is useful. Okay. Of course, we could have shown some other aspect here, but this time class was what helped us to find out and diagnose what the problem was. Okay. So now notice that once again, aesthetics 
again I am just indicating to you, aesthetics specify how a certain aspect of the data will guide a certain aspect of the display or the plot. Okay, so we said X is displacement, Y is highway. So we are saying use the X, uh, the displacement column for the X axis, the highway column for the Y axis and the class column, let it be used to determine the color of each point. Now incidentally, because of my restrictions of the slide, I haven't lined up the arguments to the AES function properly. Ideally, I should have put Y equals highway down here and color equals class down here. That's the way I should have done it. I didn't follow the conventions that, that we have actually laid down. Okay, uh, so that's what aesthetics are. What aspects of data should guide what aspect of the display? You can also use other things in this. So for example, here I've said shape equals class. Instead of color equals class, we said shape equals class. So what's going to happen is that the shape of a point is going to be determined by class. That is all the cars of the same class will have the same shape and cars of a different class will have different shapes. Okay, but notice that SUV has no shape because there is a restriction that only six shapes are allowed. Okay, so beyond six, it stops putting shapes. The reason being that uh, it is very difficult for us to distinguish more than six shapes. In fact, I have a hard time even understanding this particular graph. Okay, so we can use many other aesthetics, color, size, shape, fill, line type, uh, all of those aesthetics are available and uh, which aesthetics are applicable depend upon the, the geom to which they are being applied. So for example, for geom point, which is a scatter plot, clearly line type is not going to be applicable, right? Because line type is an aesthetic that will be applicable only to line kind of plots, you know, plots where the layer draws a line of some kind. For point, only color, shape, size, etc. are valid. Okay, so there are many different types of aesthetics and what is applicable depends upon the geom to which you apply it. If you apply an aesthetic to a geom which is not applicable to the geom, uh, ggplot will just ignore it. It won't throw any error message or anything. It will just ignore it. Uh, and maybe I'm thinking it'll also give you a warning saying I didn't use this. Okay, now comes an important point here. Let's say we want all the points to be colored just blue. Okay, we just want the points to be colored blue, not to depend upon uh, any particular uh, aspect of the data, like for example, class or whatever, right? So we might write code that looks like this, X equals displacement, Y equals highway, color equals blue. We just give the fixed value blue, okay? We would think that this will work, but it actually doesn't work correctly. So what happened was the system uh, set color blue, okay? And then it colored the, you know, it called it blue, but it gave it some other color. Okay, it didn't color it blue. The reason being that when you use the color as an aesthetic, Right? within the, as an argument to the aesthetic function, then what we are trying to say is that color should be determined by some aspect of the data. Okay, whereas what we have put here is not an aspect of the data. This is a fixed value. Okay, so that is why the system is thoroughly confused and you get something which is meaningless. Okay, so you have to be very clear. When you want to have a fixed color, then don't put it in an area which uh, is used to determine how the data is mapped to the display. This is not an aspect of data that is mapped to display, right? Because this is a fixed value. If it was an aspect of the data, then it would be good to put it here. But if it's a fixed value, you should put it outside as here. Okay, notice I've put color equals blue, but that is outside of the aesthetic function. Right? So I said geom point mapping is aesthetic. So aesthetic starts here, x equals displacement, y equals iv, it ends there. This is a separate argument to geom point. Okay? So this is what you would do if you want a fixed color 
as opposed to variable color depending upon the aspect of the some aspect of the data okay and clearly because of that the system did not generate any any legend for us because there was no legend needed because all the points are of the same color okay so this is important so i'm just highlighting it here so this was the first uh, attempt we did where we put color as an argument to aes right and then we got a meaningless display now here color is an argument to geom point so we just got all the points colored blue okay so here we've got this again i'm just stressing the point that color is part of aesthetic and that's why uh, putting a fixed value doesn't make sense okay now some other things also you can experiment with <coughs> so try to map a continuous variable to color right till now we've mapped a discrete variable to color right class is a factor it has only uh, six or seven different uh, values and the system automatically chose <coughs> one color for each of those values okay but sometimes you can also map continuous variables to color like for example color equals highway which is highway mileage okay so x axis is displacement y axis is the city mileage cty is the city mileage but color the points based on their highway mileage okay now remember highway mileage is a continuous value it's a number it can take on a value like you know 10.5 10.6 11.3 11 whatever continuous value right in case it's continuous then look at what the system did it generated a continuous scale of colors and showed you the darker colors having lower highway mileage lighter colors having higher mile highway mileage okay so clearly what you're seeing is the values of the city mileage which are on the high side also have the lighter colors because obviously a car that has high highway mileage will also have high city mileage at least that's what we would expect okay so you can map continuous variables to color but uh, some people may have difficulty in seeing the color gradations very clearly i for for one i'm not very good at uh, at making out the differences in color gradations unless the points are much bigger okay now you can also map the same variable to multiple aesthetics right by that i mean uh, you can map one variable to color and you can map the same variable let's say to size or shape or something okay so here we are saying geom point mapping is aes x equals displacement y is city color equals class size also equals class okay so that is we are saying make the size of the point depend on the class of the vehicle and make the color of the point also depend on the class of the vehicle okay so notice that it happened the way we wanted it different uh, the colors are used to represent different uh, Uh, different types of uh, class and the size of the points also differs based on class okay and notice that because of the fact that both of those aesthetics are mapped to a single variable the system was intelligent enough to generate just a single uh, just a single legend for us rather than generating two separate legends for class and color uh, for class uh, and size okay for size and color i mean so that's that's a neat thing that the system did otherwise generally if the different aesthetics were mapped to different variables then it would show uh, multiple variables within the legend okay if you map the same variable to multiple aesthetics just like before okay color and shape trans is the kind of transmission that is being used okay so again you see that it works but once again because of the fact that we went to shape more than 6 was not allowed